everyone, it's Alice and today I thought we could have a little chat about this year's Women's Prize for Fiction. So The Long List came out this week and of all the literary prizes, this is the only one that I kind of sort of keep track of. I really like seeing what's on it every year and seeing what makes it to the shortlist and seeing what wins. I just really like following the prize. I think it's a great way to discover new books. Usually there are loads of books on there that I haven't heard of before. I have made a couple of these videos in previous years where we've just gone through the list and taken a look at it and that's basically what we're gonna do today. One of the reasons I really like doing these videos is that I will talk about the books and then I always get comments like you should read this one, I didn't like this one, or I think you would like this one. So I would really like to hear your opinions as well because it usually really helps me and yeah. We're just gonna take a look at the list and see what's on there and see what looks interesting. This year I've only read one of the books and we'll get that out of the way before we talk about all the other books. It's The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell and I am a huge fan of this author. She wrote one of my favorite books ever that actually... I'm pretty sure it won the prize in 2021. It's Hamnet, which is an amazing book and I am pretty sure I discovered that book from this prize. So, you know, that's why I like checking out this particular prize. Now, I love O'Farrell's writing. I know it's not for everyone, but I really like it. It's very descriptive. Sometimes it's even a little bit flowery and I just really, really enjoy it. I really liked this book. I think the language is amazing. The story fell a little bit flat for me. It started off so well and then it tapered off a little bit, but I do get why it's on here because it is a really good book and I wonder if it's gonna win or not, but I think it has a pretty good shot. I think it deserves to be here. And also the cover is lovely. Then onto the very many books on this list that I haven't read. The first one being Memphis by Tara M. Stringfellow. And this is historical fiction, it says, and it follows three generations of a Southern black family. And I think the story begins with this woman who takes her children and flees her abusive husband. And they go back to Memphis and she goes back to the house that her father grew up in. And somehow she starts delving into her family's past. And it says that the book spans over 70 years. I did read a little bit more into the story. It's a little bit difficult to summarize, but it appears to touch on a lot of different topics. And at its core, it's like a story of several generations of resilient women. And I think that sounds amazing. I'm definitely adding this to my TBR. I think it sounds really good. And I do like a good like generational novel. Next, we have Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes, which is an interesting book to see on here, I think. I heard about this book before it came out and that I remember thinking I can't get that book until I've read the other book that I have by her on my shelves called A Thousand Ships. But now that it's on the long list, I'm wondering if I should just get it anyway. I feel a little bit inclined to just like get it and read it first. It is also just a beautiful book, but I should probably just read the one that I have first. Based on the cover, I'm sure you can see that this is a mythology retelling and it focuses on the story of Medusa, who in this book, she is like the only mortal among her god family, I think. And something happens to her that for some reason she's punished for. I'm pretty sure something really bad happens to her and her punishment for it even though it's, I don't think it's her fault, is being turned into a Gorgon. And I just think it sounds very interesting. I think it's one of those stories where, you know, the monster isn't a monster after all. And I do love a good Greek mythology retelling. So I definitely need to read this. I just maybe need to read the other book first. Then we've got the first book that I'm sort of a little bit on the fence about. It's Fire Rush by Jacqueline Crooks. And this is set in the 1980s, I believe. And we follow this woman who lives on the outskirts of London and she loves escaping her life by going out and dancing and she loves music. And then one night at one of these places, she meets someone and that somehow, I think something tragic happens and it sets her off on a path of self-discovery. So there's a couple of things that make me wonder if this is for me or not. I'm not super like, 
that into reading books that are set in the 1980s. I don't know why, but there's something about that decade that just doesn't really appeal to me. And then the biggest thing is that for some reason, and I don't know why this is, but for some reason, whenever I read a novel where music is an integral part of it, it just so rarely works for me. So whenever I read a blurb and it says something about like music being super important to the story, there's just something about it that doesn't work for me or hasn't worked for me yet. And so I'm a little bit iffy about this one. Up next, we have got Wandering Souls by Cecile Pinn, which is again historical fiction. And we follow this family who flee their village in Vietnam and they try to make it to Hong Kong. And on the way there, they get separated. And I think only some of the family members survive. I think there are three siblings that we follow in the story and they have to try to make it on their own. And they eventually make it to England when, like it's during the time when Thatcher was prime minister. And I'm pretty sure that's also in the eighties, which is funny because I just said that <laughs> I'm not that into books set in the eighties, but I think I'm more interested in like the political climate of the eighties than the like cultural, like artsy part of it. And so, I am actually really interested to read this one. I do think it's one of those books that's probably gonna devastate me, but it just sounds really, really good. And I do like when stories focus on siblings, and so I'm really interested to see that. And I do also love this cover. Another one that has a great cover is Black Butterflies by Priscilla Morris, which is an excellent title as well. It is, I think, inspired by true events and it's set in Sarajevo in the 1990s and we follow this woman who is a teacher and an artist and there is like growing unrest in the city and because of that she decides to send her family to England but she stays behind in the city herself and then the city falls under siege. This one sounds very interesting to me in part because there's something about the way the main character is described, it really intrigues me. And then also, I think it could be interesting to read something about this conflict, which I know nothing about. I know that this is fiction, but very often you can learn a lot from reading fiction that's inspired by true events. And I really do not know a whole lot about this at all. And the 1990s is pretty recent historical wise, so I should probably know more. <laughs> then we have got I'm Not a Fan by Sheena Patel, which to be honest, I don't really understand what this book is about even after looking into it. It says it's about an unnamed narrator who is in an unequal, unfaithful relationship. And the way that the book is described makes me feel like the writing and the storytelling is a little bit experimental, which could go both ways. Just looking into it, I'm not particularly intrigued. There's something about certain types of books where you can read the blurb and the way the blurb is written tells you a lot about what the book is like. And usually blurbs like these don't intrigue me because I usually don't get on with the books like these. So I think I'm probably gonna skip this one. I do think it's a cool cover though. Next, we have Glory by Noviolet Bulawayo which I think is told from the perspective of a goat. <laughs> I think the story is about like, I guess it's set in this like animal kingdom or country and the leader falls unexpectedly from power and it's about the animal's path to freedom or something like that. I think it's inspired by what happened in Zimbabwe in 2017 and it sounds a little different. I kind of like stories where you have an unexpected narrator and I think there is something interesting to telling a story and replacing humans with animals. Like that just does something. And I have read stories where that really works so I'm definitely gonna give this a go. Funnily enough, I actually have another book on my shelves that is also told from the perspective of a goat. I haven't read it yet but clearly there's something about that that really appeals to me. <laughs> then we have The Dog of the North by Elizabeth Mackenzie, which is a story about a divorced woman who has a lot of problems in her family and she ends up like traveling around in this borrowed van or something. And I'll be totally honest with you, I'm not interested in this book at all. Just looking into it and like reading the different blurbs 
kind of bored me. So it's just not the kind of book that I really like reading. These kinds of stories are just not that appealing to me for whatever reason. And I only ever read them if someone who knows me really, really well like recommends a book specifically to me. If not, I just skip past these kinds of books. So I'm probably gonna skip past this one as well. <laughs> Next on the list though, we've got one that I'm definitely interested in. It's Homesick by Jennifer Croft. But I'm a little confused by this one because when I looked it up, it says that it's a memoir. And I don't know, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, it does sound very interesting to me. It's a coming of age story about two sisters who grow up in Oklahoma and they're homeschooled because one of the sisters has a mysterious illness that causes seizures or something and she keeps having to go to the hospital. But the other sister flourishes intellectually and at age 15 she enters university and she loves languages so I think that's what she's studying but it appears like something happens to her there that has tragic consequences and I just think it sounds really interesting. I really like stories about sisters whether they're fictional or not and yeah it just sounds very interesting. One thing I'll mention though is that there are two covers of this book and one of them I love which is probably the one that I've put up on the screen and the other one I don't really get like why you would do that when you have this other beautiful cover. The next one also sounds amazing. It's The Bandit Queens by Perini Schroff, which again, excellent title. And the story sounds amazing. It's about this widow who lives in this village in India, and she is rumored to have killed her husband who was just banished. And she is living her life and it's much more peaceful than it was when she was married. And it's all going well until the other women of the village start coming to her because they would also like to get rid of their own husbands. I have to read this one. I love the concept. I think it sounds brilliant, which probably says something about me that we don't need to get into right now. But yeah, I really, really want to read this one. I also, again, love the cover. <laughs> Next, we have got actually another animal narration book on this list. It's Pod by Laylene Paul. And the story is told from the perspective of like a deaf dolphin or something who, because it can't hear, it can't like take part in the rituals of the other dolphins. And I think it ends up alone and we get to see what happens to the dolphin's life, I guess. Now, I don't really know how to defend or explain the fact that I am somehow interested in reading a story from the perspective of a goat, but I'm not interested in reading it from the perspective of a dolphin. I don't really know why that is. This just seems less appealing to me for some reason. And I don't know if it's just because I really don't like dolphins. Like they really freak me out. I've read some stuff about dolphins that would give you nightmares and I just, I don't know. I don't think this is for me. <laughs> Next up, we have got more historical fiction with Trespasses by Louise Kennedy, which is set during the Troubles. And we follow this woman who gets caught between her community and this love affair that she's having. And that's all I really gathered from the blurb. And I'm a little on the fence about this one because I am interested in reading books set during the Troubles. I think that's very, very interesting, but I'm not particularly interested in stories about love affairs. So I don't know where this sort of lands on how much it focuses on different things. But if any of you have read this, I would love to hear what you thought because I don't quite know about this one. Then we've got this lovely looking book called Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. And this is a coming of age historical fiction. And we follow this boy who grows up in the Southern Appalachian mountains. And he lives with his single mother and we basically just follow him throughout his life. He grows up very poor and he has experiences with like foster care, child labor, love, loss, all of that. The story has taken some inspiration from David Copperfield and sort of brought it into closer to the present day. And I think it sounds very interesting. I've also never read anything by this author, but I really want to. So maybe this is the book that I can start with. Although I will say I have seen this book in a bookstore and um, 
I found it a little bit intimidating because it's not exactly short. Second to last, we have got Children of Paradise by Camilla Grudova. And this is a story about this girl or young woman who gets a job at this cinema that is like the city's oldest cinema. And it's kind of not a super fun job. It's very boring and she's just trying to get through the days. But then eventually I think she makes some friends and starts like discovering this place or something. I will be honest, I'm not super interested in this one, so I think I'm just gonna skip past it. Lastly though, we have Cursed Bread by Sophie McIntosh. And this is, again, historical fiction. There's a lot of historical fiction on this list this year. And it centers around the real unsolved mystery of this mass poisoning that happened in this village in France in 1951. It is a fictionalized account, but that has like something to do with the story or it's taken inspiration from it. And the book centers around this woman who is the baker's wife and she longs for an extraordinary life. And I think she feels a bit stuck. And then this charismatic couple moves into the village and she gets drawn to them. And it sounds a little bit like slightly sinister. And then all of these weird things start happening and I guess maybe it's because people are being poisoned. I don't know but I am intrigued and I definitely want to give this a go. I have also read another book by Macintosh and even though I didn't love it I liked it and I would like to read more from her because I think she has an interesting way of writing things and there's like a feel to that other book that I read by her that I really really like. So that was the end of the list though which means we've made it to the end of this video. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I would love to hear if you've read any of these and what you thought, whether you like them or not, or, you know, are you interested in any of the books? Do any of them stand out to you? Are you interested in not reading <laughs> some of the books? I would love to hear why. I always think that's so interesting. Also, if any of you have read a lot of the books and you think you can predict the shortlist, I would love to hear which ones you think are gonna make it. I think there are six on the shortlist and I can never predict, like I, get, I never know. Maybe Maggie O'Farrell, but I'm just basing that on the fact that I have read, that's, that's like the one book that I've read that's on the list. So it's the only one I can talk about. I guess also if you think you can predict the winner, that could be really interesting to hear as well. But yeah, that was it for this video for today. As always, thank you very much for hanging out with me today and I will see you soon. Bye.